Well, greetings, and this will be a dedication to all the gifted and wonderful comedians and comic acts. All of these folks impacted my life with their creativity and insights, and I recall each and every one of them. They added so much to my everyday existence, and somehow life became a little less boring and routine, and I could never forget them. And comedy, for some people, is taken lightly, perhaps too lightly, but comedy is a very sophisticated genre since it contains quite a few different aspects, which include irony, sarcasm, wordplay, puns, improvisation, slapstick, physical comedy, etc. It's a completely open form with very few taboos, if any. And one of the more unusual aspects or perceptions of comedy is that some people consider it a light genre. I, for one, completely disagree. I consider it to possibly be the most serious and consequential genre. And as one person said about comedy once was that it's very easy to make comedy shows simply because people are a royal pain in the ass. I don't know one person that isn't such. This is life and humanity is unpredictable, stressful, annoying, and challenging. It's really easy. And our lives have produced a lot of comedy shows, acts, and comedians. And as the saying goes, comedy is funny, entertaining, and not to be taken too seriously. But I already mentioned how seriously I take comedy. Comedy always hits home as it unravels all of the complexities, frustrations, and follies. Comedy is perceptive, poignant, relatable, expository, and most importantly, it's clever. And I enjoy laughing about as much as anything I do in life, and the creativity in comedy is so incredibly perceptive and revealing. And it, along with music, tells the human story as well as any book, novel, or classroom. And as someone once said, a comedian becomes your friend, and that laughter that comes from a joke or bizarre scenario is somewhat similar to an orgasm. I don't know if I'd go that far, but <laughs> and as I mentioned in an earlier episode, I can't fathom why so many successful male comedians die so young. But I surmise that it's the combination of the thrill of connecting with an audience, which has to be the ultimate buzz, the high that can't be replaced. And from there, there's the fame, the drugs and alcohol, the late hours, the usual ruination and downfall from the road. The road can kill. It's not easy on the road. And there's a very long list of entertainers and musicians that have died before their time. And back to the subject of comedy. It's always been proven that laughter has therapeutic benefits and that it's naturally a positive sensation and a healthy way to overcome stress. It always works for me. It decreases stress-making hormones by decreasing serum levels of cortisol, epinephrine, and some other acidic hormone that's too hard to pronounce. <laughs> anyway, I didn't intend to go overboard. And from here, I need to salute the following people who have made indelible contributions to this art form. As I'm kind of a nerdy purveyor of the comedy and music world, and it's a very long list, and I apologize for this, but I felt that I had to do this. So here goes. George Carlin, Groucho Marx, Bernie Mac, Jonathan Winters, Richard Pryor, Robin Williams, Dave Chappelle, Rodney Dangerfield, Gary Shanley, Don Rickles, Mitch, Hed Mitch Hedberg, Ron White, John Leguizamo, Chris Rock, Red Fox, Lenny Bruce, each member from Monty Python's Flying Circus, which includes Graham Chapman, John Cleese, Eric Idle, Terry Jones, Michael Palin, and Terry Gilliam. Also, Jerry Seinfeld, Louis C.K., Sam Kinison, D.L. Hewley, Bill Murray, Louis Anderson, Sid Caesar, David Letterman, Greg Giraldo, George Lopez, Dick Gregory, Carol Burnett, Bob Newhart, Patrice O'Neill, Robert Klein, Freddie Prinze, Tim Conway, Billy Connolly, Steve Martin, Hannibal Burris, Joan Rivers, Jackie Vernon, Steve Harvey, Cedric the Entertainer, Mel Brooks, Larry David, Kevin Hart, Margaret Cho, Andy Kaufman, Ricky Gervais, Eddie Murphy, Jim Carrey, Norm MacDonald, Moms Mabley, Albert Brooks, Bill Hicks, John Oliver, Kean Peel, Johnny Carson, Phyllis Diller, Godfrey Cambridge, Steve Allen, Jay Leno, W.C. Fields, Ray Romano, Will Farrell, Jackie Mason, Carl Reiner, Stephen Wright, Mort Saul, Bill Rosenthal, John Belushi, Dan Aykroyd, Buddy Hackett, Woody Allen, Foster Brooks, Adam Sandler, Mark Marin, Jackie Leonard, Roseanne Barr, I said it was a long list, Amy Schumer, Larry the Cable Guy, Sarah Silverman, Tina Fey, John Panette, Sebastian Maniscalco, 
Stephen Colbert, Milton Berle, George Burns, Stanley Myron Handelman, Tody Fields, Alan King, Steve Carell, Michael McDonald, Richard Jenny, Betty White, Ralphie May, Will Sasso, John Candy, Eugene Levy, Joe Flaherty, Catherine O'Hara, Martin Short, Elaine Boozler, Rita Rudner, Ali Wong, Sophie Tucker, Elaine May, Professor Erwin Corey, Imogene Coca, Dave Thomas, Andrea Martin, Rick Moranis, Lily Tomlin, Elaine May, Ellen DeGeneres, Chico Marx, Monique, Tiffany Haddish, Whoopi Goldberg, Jean Carroll, Peter Sellers, Tommy Cooper, Colin Quinn, and the entire cast of Saturday Night Live since their very first year on TV back in 1975. That's it, and I hope I didn't miss anyone. Now we'll just do a couple little things here to finish up. I love these commercials on skin cream that claim in only 10 minutes your wrinkles will smoothen and be almost totally unnoticeable, with almost being the key word here. But what they don't tell you is that in another couple of hours, the wrinkles return. It's a temporary fix, and when they show the difference between the wrinkled areas on the face, they don't look very different to me. And when you use your skin, use skin cream and you're 69 years old, I don't think anyone is going to notice the difference between your wrinkles before and after. And to boot, a one-ounce container of retinol moisturizer or Revitalift is about $25, and I look like a damn prune now anyway, so with or without it... <laughs> So lastly, so recently, one afternoon after having lunch, I decided to make a rum runner, which is a great drink, and then partake on a little weed. And my wife came, comes home. I've got a smile on, and I go to kiss her, and she knows I'm feeling good. And she says, yeah, you've got a little buzz on, but it won't last long. You'll be a grumpy pain in the ass when it passes. <laughs> She's right, and why can't I feel like this all the time? I'll stop here.